Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for being here today. We would like to begin by thanking the Department of the Air Force School Liaison Program for making today's webinar on college-bound portfolios for military-connected high school students possible. Thank you so much for taking our poll. Uh, we can see that um, we've got a variety of people here today. That is wonderful. Um, we want to thank you all. We always do welcome professionals who work with military connected children to our parent trainings. And I know you will find the information and tips that we present useful. Please note that our MSEC parent support webinars have been designed with parents as the target audience. Before we introduce ourselves, we wanted to share with you a bit more about MSEC and its mission. The Military Child Education Coalition, MSEC, is a nonprofit organization established 25 years ago, and our mission is to support all military connected children by educating, advocating, and collaborating to resolve education challenges associated with the military lifestyle. In 2005, MSEC formalized support and programming for military-connected parents so they may be empowered, informed, and proactive in supporting their children's educational journey. We strive to deliver informative and interactive webinars that address academic, social, and emotional issues associated with the military family lifestyle. Our vision is for every military-connected child to be college, work, and life ready. My name is Emily Barton. I am coming to you from Montgomery, Alabama. I have been with MSEC since 2018 as a parent educator and member of the webinar team. My husband is active duty Air Force. Uh, he's been in for 24 years and uh, we're stationed here at Maxwell Air Force Base in Montgomery. We have two children. We have a daughter who is 20 years old. She is a college sophomore out in Texas. And we also have a 17 year old who is a senior in high school. And uh, I can tell you the information that we're presenting today is very useful and valuable. I've used it myself with both of my children. And uh, I hope that you too will be able to um, find some use in it. So I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Kim. Thanks, Emily. Hey, everybody. My name is Kim Armstrong. I'm happy to be here today. Um, I am currently residing in um, JBLM, Washington. So I'm in the beautiful uh, Pacific West Coast. It's it's pretty nice out here. The sun's out today, so that's always a good thing. Um, I am also military connected. My husband is active duty. Uh, we've been married almost 20 years now. We have two military connected kiddos. I have a ninth grader and a sixth grader. So I have one high schooler and one middle schooler. And this webinar today is definitely catching my eye because that is where we are headed right now. You know, as a freshman, she's thinking about schools and it's getting real. Um, I know we only have three more years, but three years goes pretty fast. So I definitely need to be prepared. Um, I've been with MSEC since 2017. Uh, originally uh, with a parent-to-parent -parent program, and now I'm on the webinar team with Emily and a bunch of other great folks here. So we're we're happy to be here today. I'm excited to present this really great material to everyone. Um, we we encourage chat in in using the chat box. So feel free to have that open and chat with us. Ask questions. You know we're going to ask questions with you guys. Um, so it's really fun when folks interact. Um, but we have a couple administrative announcements before we move on. Just before um, you know everyone can kind of see what's going on here. So at the end of the webinar. Uh, we're going to ask you to take a survey about today's presentation, and we really appreciate the couple minutes it's going to take y'all to do that for us. This is a key method we use to tell our funders what we are doing, and it lets us know how we need to change things so that we can continue offering the very best training possibilities to you, um, our military connected parents that we serve. We also, like I said, have the chat box on the screen. Feel free to use that um, and ask questions if you need anything. Um, also, we have that downloadable resource that goes along with today's presentation. It's a PDF file. If you were on a phone, um, more than likely you're not able to get that downloaded. So you're, you you can private message us if you would like. And we can, um, if you can give us your email address, we can e definitely email it to you um, right after the presentation. So you have that as well. Um, it's a great little resource that kind of goes along with everything we're going to discuss today. 
And also, this webinar is being recorded, as they always are, and you can always view it later. And if you would like to uh, review the material or experience any technical difficulties during the presentation, we encourage you to watch the recording, which will be on our website um, shortly after this presentation. So let's jump right in with some of our learning objectives today. We, we really, um, <clears throat> you know, we want to encourage you to help your military-connected college-bound students set goals and become organized so that they become successful adults um, with as many post-secondary options as possible. So today we're gonna focus on helping you so that you can help your student prepare for those college-bound portfolios. Uh, a po po portfolio is a great way to keep accurate and up-to-date records for your student. Your high school students who are college-bound can use these portfolios to ease that process of uh, that applying for college, financial aid, applying for internships, and then maintaining this portfolio also helps the students track their progress. And it, it could be really valuable tools. We hope you kind of will see that today. So some of the things we're going to talk about is the address the importance of a portfolio for a military connected high school student. And then we're also going to identify the components of that portfolio and then describe kind of how to create this portfolio together um, as we're here today. So we hope we can give you some good good um, ideas for you and your student to be better prepared for college. So I'm going to pass it back to Emily to, to start us off. All right. Thank you, Kim. So a college bound portfolio for high school students is an organized collection of documents that reflect your students activities and progress in school. The average military child will change schools between six and nine times before they graduate high school. When we look at this and think about this, we realize that it's very important that we keep the students' records current, accurate, and complete. <clears throat> the Military Kids Neal 2020 Education Survey Summary Report contained an array of closed and open items, and we received over 5,100 responses on this survey from military-connected students, parents, veterans, and professionals serving military-connected children. We are going to put a link in the chat box to the summary report, but I just wanted to read a few statements that are from our military connected children. One student said, every school is different, different requirements, different schedules, and different resources. Another student said, moving is not a choice. And then another student said, everything is new, not just one thing. So you can see just through these uh, few responses that our military connected children do go through a lot. Um, moving is a very big deal for them and there are a lot of changes associated with moving. So in order to better support our military connected students, having a portfolio can really be very helpful. The portfolio allows them to have an organized snapshot of their skills and abil abilities readily available. They may even want to bring it with them when they go on college visits or to college fairs because it's going to contain pertinent information. Neil, we know that senior year in high school is hectic. I have a high school senior right now. Uh, this is my second time going through it, and I can personally attest to how crazy it can be. Applying to colleges as well as applying for scholarships and financial aid requires detailed information. An organized portfolio can contain each piece of important information in one centralized location. It will allow your student to keep track of application deadlines, letters of recommendation, and much more. This will reduce your student stress as well as your own because you won't have to constantly be searching for paperwork and details. If you do have a move scheduled during your student's high school career, it can be invaluable to have transfer records and course placement information together in one place. 
discuss with your student the value and importance of gathering information into an easy to transport por portfolio. The habit of being organized and keeping accurate records is a skill uh, which can be useful throughout life. So we really want to encourage them to be involved in this process. So I uh, have a quick poll question for you that we are going to pull up. And the question is, are you currently using a digital portfolio? I see we have okay. a few responses. Can you see them, Emily? I do see them. Yes. Okay. So it looks like most of you are not using one, and that is perfectly fine. Um, I'm going to share some information about it right now. Uh, you may want to consider using one. Um, sometimes I... I, I have used both. I've used a, a hard copy portfolio as well as an electronic, and there are definitely benefits to both. So college bound portfolios can be organized in an electronic digital format that is easy to maintain, change, and update. Items for this electronic digital portfolio can be scanned or otherwise converted into a digital format. Military connected students uh, interested in sports or drama or music may even wish to include video footage uh, to capture their performances and talents. And these can be included in a digital for portfolio. It can be beneficial a lot of times to have these act sports activities and performances documented for future opportunities. For example, your student may play lacrosse at one duty station, but after a move may play soccer. So it might be important to have video footage of the, both sports um, in case they are needed at a later date. For those of you who are considering using a digital portfolio, here are a few helpful ideas. Consider creating a space such as a documents folder on your computer, which will contain all of this portfolio information. Nest other folders within this main folder. This will allow your computer folder to act as a file drawer or portfolio on your desktop. Ensure that you save uh, and file each each time you add it, add or edit information. You just want to constantly be saving it and updating it. Give these files logical specific names and include dates in the file names as much as possible. The date can help you keep track of that most current information. And you'll want to update these files regularly. Keep your folder uncluttered by clearing out old information. Also, be sure to back it up often. Do this by backing up files to an external hard drive like a thumb drive or cloud storage. We would like to also mention a wonderful, amazing digital resource that's offered by MSEC. It's called SchoolQuest. In addition to providing a wide variety of educational resources for our highly mobile military families, SchoolQuest also offers an online digital portfolio as well. We're going to watch a video now that explains it in more depth, but I just want to mention on this slide there's a QR code. Please feel free to utilize that so you're able to access SchoolQuest. Many military-connected children will move over six times in their school careers, creating unique challenges and barriers to education. That's why MSEC created SchoolQuest, a free online tool that puts parents in the driver's seat for their children's education. MSEC strives to dismantle barriers and collaborate on behalf of all military-connected children to ensure they are college, work, and life ready. Register for free at schoolquest.militarychild.org. Okay, so as as you heard, it is a free resource, um, which is pretty pretty fantastic. And we're just kind of go through it a little bit to give you a better idea of 
of what it does and what maybe can benefit your family. Um, but once you set up School Quest, it it gives the students uh, a place to explore and increases their autonomy, allowing them to set up their own profiles that specifically relate to them. They could select resources for themselves and add checklists based on their interests. So we've included some examples to demonstrate the different aspects that can be individualized within the School Quest profile. And again, if you have multiple children, you can create multiple profiles, uh, obviously one for each kiddo. Um, so on the next slide, we're going to talk a little bit about the different options that your students can have in their profile. So here you can click on these different boxes here, um, such as college essay or dual enrollment or college applications. And all of these can be customized to fit your child um, and better prepare them for college to keep up with all the important documents and keep them all organized so that they can be ready to go. Again, not all of these apply to everybody, but you can find the ones that uh, pertain specifically to your student. Um, and then next we have the checklists. So on this slide, we're going to show you some examples of the different types of checklists that can be created within their profile. This can include state by state transition and scholarship information. So that way you can um, kind of look at different states that you might be living in or where your student maybe want to go to school. And you go look at the different scholarships that are offered in that state. You can also look at um, what we have is called chart your course roadmap to success. This is another great uh, profile or I'm sorry checklist so that your student can be ready and college ready starting as young as you know the middle school years also you can have college application checklists which we know of course that it's a daunting task to do the college applications um, so it's nice to have a checklist to kind of keep you on track and then you there's checklists for parent teacher conferences maybe some questions you want to ask the counselor you know during those last few years of school to get them ready for college also um you know, you can create these digital profiles for each of your students and find the ones that fit them, um, you know, directly to, to kind of like guide them into which way they want to go. So we highly encourage you to create a profile for your student. If you're an educator and you're, or say you're a school counselor and you, you don't specifically need it for you personally, you can always go in there and create kind of a fake profile just to kind of get in there and look around and then that way you can say gosh this is really spectacular I'm going to share this with the families that I work with and say did you know that this is a free um free free app it's free um to have in your back pocket and to store all of your information honestly and it's kind of nice so we encourage everyone to check it out um it's it's a really great resource however um if if for those of us who prefer to have a hard copy portfolio which like uh, Emily said, it's good to have both, right? You want to have one in hand, but it's also nice to have this um, backup as well. So we're going to kind of talk about the hard copy and how we're going to build it and kind of put it together. Um, and then that way, this is something you can hand carry um, through each move. And if there's uh, military connected parents in here, I'm sure you have a PCS binder as well. Everyone has a PCS binder with all that important information, right, that you don't want to put on the moving truck. Um, so we, we're going to encourage you to uh, also create this portfolio as well. And so I have created just kind of a blank one here to kind of give you an idea, but just, you know, any sort of uh, three ring binder works great with your student's name on it, their graduating year, you know, and then we're going to talk about each of these six tabs and how important they are and what each tab is going to be for. Um, but this is something we encourage you to do with your student, right? We don't want you just doing this all mom in the background. Um, we, we really want them to be a big part of it. So let's talk about um, the front sheet there that I kind of showed you. So you, you want them to be a part of it, put their name on there, put their graduating year on there. Um, this should be a collaborative activity. You could decide what to include on this, maybe a picture or um, some personal notes, um, but just to kind of keep it, keep it simple, and, but also organized and look professional, right? Um, so when you initially grab all these materials and you assemble this binder, of course, it's going to take a little bit of effort. And we promise that that effort will pay off. Um, we really want you to involve your student and discuss with them what needs to be kept and what needs to be added to the folder and maybe what needs to be taken out as time moves on. So it's, it's a constant update, right, until the day that they graduate. So I'm going to pass it to Emily to talk about that first tab, which is the financial aid tab. 
Yes. Okay. So the first section of your binder is going to be that financial aid section. This is a pretty important section. Um, I'm, we are going to walk you through each tab, um, but we want to start with this one. It's, it is super important. So uh, within this, you want to file all information related to financial aid. This is a section that you will be referring to during the high school years and during the college years. Um, it's, it's not going to end as soon as your child uh, starts attending college. It's something that you'll need to maintain uh, throughout the college years. So um, you will want to include information within this section about 529 plans and the GI Bill. We all know that paying for college is very expensive. If you are using a 529 plan, you'll want to file records and receipts in this section. For example, if you're using 529 funds to pay for a new computer, you'll want to include that receipt here so that you keep it. You'll need it for documentation purposes. You'll want to keep track of how much money you have in your 529 plan. So keep that up to date. Some students may be using transferred post 9-11 GI Bill benefits. You'll want to keep track of how many months of benefits your student has, and then as they are using them, how many they have left. You'll also want to keep up with all paperwork from the VA here including your student's letter of eligibility. Having all of this together is very helpful since your student will have to communicate every semester of college um, with the VA, um, as well as the school certifying official um, about using those transferred benefits. There is a lot of of paperwork, uh, that letters and things like that that will be exchanged. And so it's important to keep all of that documentation together. Uh, even if your student still has a couple of years left before they graduate from, from high school, start looking at those grants and scholarships. If you come across a scholarship opportunity, file away that information in this section so that you'll have it when your student is ready to apply. Some families find it helpful to create their own scholarship deadline list in order to keep track of these. Uh, in your downloadable resource that is in your chat box, we have included a deadline tracking sheet to get started. Um, and then the, um, the FAFSA and CSS profile. For, for federal student aid, you will need to fill out that FAFSA, which stands for Free Application for Federal Student Aid Online. There are additionally about 250 colleges that require you to fill out the CSS profile, which stands for College Scholarship Service Profile, in addition to the FAFSA. This is another detailed financial aid form. You'll want to keep all records related to the FAFSA and CSS profile in this section. Uh, keep in mind that you will need to fill out that FAFSA each year that your student is in college. So you'll need this information throughout their college career. So again, it's very important information to maintain. And then also in this section, uh, you'll want to keep track of financial aid awards or loans that your student is taking out. So once your student does get accepted at college, you will receive financial aid award letters from each college. Uh, additionally, you may have to take out student loans. So filing all of this information within the section of the portfolio will make it easy to keep track of how to pay for college. Additionally, MSEC does offer web webinars on the FAFSA and CSS profile. We also uh, offer uh, various webinars on selecting the college that fits, along with other topics such as grants and scholarships. Please feel free to check out our webinars on our website for more information and to watch uh, those previously recorded webinars. All right, so the second tab is going to contain college information. Uh, so a variety of information about different colleges. 
First, uh, you'll want to make sure you have contact information for each college within this, this tab. Most likely, your student will be applying to multiple colleges. So within this tab, you can add each college's general contact information, uh, perhaps the website or address, that kind of information. It can also be very helpful to jot down the main reasons why your student is considering that particular college. Perhaps you could uh, have your student write down information such as the programs of study that the college offers, the location, the size of the college, the student faculty ratio, research opportunities. Having all of this information at your fingertips will make it easier when it comes down to deciding which college to select. Also, different colleges have different requirements for their freshman applicants. Some colleges may require interviews or a certain number of letters of recommendation. So you will find all of the application requirements on each college college's website, and it's a good idea to file that the, all of those details here so that you can easily go back and reference them. It's also important to put deadline information in this section. Colleges have their own deadlines, not only for the application or for financial aid, um, but also for applying to housing. So right now during my, my son's college application process, we're in the, um, he is still deciding on where he's going to go. And it's very important for him to keep track of those housing deadlines because they do vary quite a bit. So remember, um, keeping track of these, all of these deadlines from applications to financial aid to uh, the housing is crucial. Missing any of these deadlines could possibly jeopardize your students' chances of getting accepted or receiving those very important grants and scholarships. So make sure to keep track of deadlines. And then also, uh, it's a good idea to keep track of the visits and virtual tours. The, the easiest way to learn more about a college is by going on a visit or perhaps doing a virtual tour. Keeping notes about what you like and don't like, along with any questions that you may have, is very important. Visiting a college in person allows you to glean a lot of information just by walking around the campus and talking to other students. So this tab is a very good place to file information about these visits, um, about uh, your impressions and any notes that you have after you visit colleges. You can also keep track of the dates that you visit colleges, as well as the names of the tour guides and admission counselors with whom you meet. All right, and so Kim is gonna share about the correspondence tab. Okay, so tab number three, we're, we're going six tabs, guys, so we're, we're halfway done here. So tab number three is all about that correspondence and how important it is. Of course, colleges want to admit students who want to go to that college and are interested in that college. And so a great way to show your interest is by communicating with the college itself. So we encourage you to keep a contact log. And this is just to show, you know, who you talk to and when you talk to them. Um, you know, and, and, and if like Emily said, you're talking to several colleges, we want to make sure you keep it all straight and you don't kind of mismatch of who you talk to and oops, what was, which college said that, right? It can get confusing very quickly. So it's important to be as organized as you can. So the contact log is important. We also encourage you to write those thank you emails, you know, have your student log on and write a thank you email saying, hey, we you know, I really appreciate that phone call you 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 had with me yesterday. Um, you know, you answered a lot of my questions, those kinds of things. And it shows the college that your student cares, and that they're kind of following through with what they're saying. And then you can also put um, financial aid communication in there. So as Emily mentioned, talking um, and having all that financial aid information in that first tab, but you now you can have the communication with the financial aid office at that college in which your student is interested in. Um, you know, if you have questions with a particular situation, you can write those in there so that the next time you, you call, you can open that up and say, oh yeah, I wanted to ask them about this, this, and this. Um, so again, just kind of keeps you organized. All right, so tab four, now we're talking about 
um, filing all those related uh, work samples from your student and their schoolwork into this specific tab. So, um, of course, you want report cards in there, right? Report cards, maybe some unofficial transcripts, their, their class ranks, um, their test scores, maybe some unofficial transcripts that you get from the school. It's important to kind of just look through them and make sure they're correct. Sometimes mistakes happen. Of course, we don't want that to happen, but it's important just to kind of look it over with your student, make sure it's correct. You can also include standardized test results, such as the PSAT, the SAT or the ACT. Um, if your student is taking international baccalaureate classes or AP classes, it's also important to have those scores in there as well um, in that section. Another one we want to talk about a little bit is the essay. So a lot of colleges do require students to submit an essay. So keep in mind the essays they have written in school may come in handy when they're writing essays for college applications. They will not need to start from scratch for an essay idea and they can easily tweak their work to write a college essay. So keep those essays in there and maybe you never know when one might work uh, as a college application essay. Also, if you apply for scholarships, many organizations do require essays, so it's a good place to go um, to get those started as well. And then schoolwork, such as, you know, textbook information, the course syllabus, um, you know, their current schedule, their course rigor, things that they're doing right now, it's a great place to have those printed out and put those in that file. Um, for, for those of you that are going to move, keeping that schoolwork samples from all the major subjects, show the new school kind of what was covered in class, so you can definitely pull out this binder when you get to a new place um, to show your students work. And there's no need to keep every single paper, just the ones that kind of showcase your students' best work. Maybe you can make copies of the textbook covers of the textbooks they use, maybe the table of contents, or if it has an online version, you could just print it from there. Um, file copies of your class syllabus uh, since it outlines the objectives and the requirements that your student had to obtain. Also, you can add your students current schedule as we said um, so the new school can know exactly what your student has been enrolled in to kind of match them and get where they need to be um, in course placement and having all this information can help with um, you know transferring courses and it, especially if you have a mid-year move which a lot of military folks have to endure as a mid-year move and those can be tough so having all these or um, things organized can really be beneficial um, for your student. Okay, so tab five, let's talk a little bit about um, those all everything related to the high school students attend that they attended. So if you're lucky enough to have your student attend one high school, that's great. Um, but a lot of the times uh, military connected kiddos can go to multiple high schools. My daughter uh, will probably be going to three, if not four, um, which is not ideal, but that's okay. You know, you want to have everything um, filed away properly. Um, so again, it's really important to have the address of every school, the a point of contact you had from that school. And then when your student is filling out applications for colleges or scholarships, they're going to need to know all the addresses of those schools and possibly a phone number. So having that all in there is, is kind of helps keep the process going. You can file your student's counselor contact information, especially if they have a relationship with them and they've kind of helped out your student a lot. It's great to have them um, on call if you need them. You can also upload or send your students official transcripts uh, when they apply to colleges. Um, a great other thing to put in there is a calendar or profile or grading scale. Uh, so you can have these kind of print it out and put them in there. If you're moving during high school, students can sometimes lose class rank when they move. So when students are applying for colleges, an idea is to send the previous school's profile and grading skill along with their transcript. Um, however, please note that most colleges do recalculate GPAs because of differences in grading skills. So that's just another thing to consider. Um, and another thing you could put in this tab is the special programs record. So you can ask the school for a copy of your student's cumulative folder. As soon as you know that you're PCSing, kind of give them a, a, enough heads up that you can um, to, to have them print those out for you. But if your student is enrolled in a special program such as English as a second language, or maybe they're on an IEP, an indiv individualized education plan, or a 504 plan, um, you can file for those papers here um, and have them in that binder to just make sure that that's there. And if you need it, you could pull it out and use it because um, it could definitely become a lot of paperwork, but it's great to be organized. So we have one more tab that Emily's going to cover about resumes and activities. 
Okay. All right. So we saved the best tab for last. Tab six uh, is the activities and resume tab. So this last tab is for your students' accomplishments and interests. So one thing, um, or maybe several things that you'll want to include are the um, your students' employment information or volunteer log. You uh, will want your student to keep records and hours related to their paid job and volunteer work, which will help when filling out their applications. Uh, some scholarships require volunteer hours. Also, some high schools require students to complete a certain number of community service hours to graduate. The National Honor Society also requires uh, volunteer hours to be a member. Volunteering or community service shows colleges that the military connected students cares about and helping others and serving others, even when they're new to the community. Um, we also want to think about our hidden helpers who are children of wounded, ill, or injured service members. Often these hidden helpers take on additional roles and responsibilities at home. And so this is a good place where you can mention those responsibilities and keep track of them so that you can let colleges know about this. This is very important. There are online templates on Microsoft Word and on Google Docs that your students can use to get started. And oftentimes there are free resume building services available at your uh, Army Community Services and the Airmen and Family Readiness Center on military installations. You can also check out the youth, uh, the local youth service at your uh, military installation. And so these can be very, very helpful um, just to sort of get you started. And Kim has put uh, some links. And I see we have a question in the chat that I just wanted to respond to. Um, the question is, if scholarships require volunteer hours, are these just self-reported or do they require some sort of verification like a supervisor signature or something si similar? That is a great question. It can vary. I have seen it um, just with both of my teenagers, I've seen it vary a little bit. Sometimes they just want you to have, keep track of those hours. Other times um, there may be a, a required or necessary signature. I think it depends. Um, I, I would, I would try to find out when you are applying to a certain program, see if you can find out. I will, I can tell you for the colleges that my children have applied to on those applications, they just want to know a number. That's just been my experience. Um, if you if you're needing hours for a certain program, perhaps National Honor Society, that may be different. I hope that answers your question. I know it's a little wishy washy. Um, but it is very important to keep those detailed records. They can be a big benefit to a student, particularly if you are going to be moving during those high school years. All right, so um, we are going to talk a little bit more about a resume and we have a poll question that we're going to pull up. And the poll question asks, has your student begun work on a resume? All right, good. Some have, some haven't. No one wrote they need a resume. <laughs> so that's good. Okay, good. Thank you so much for taking part in that poll. We do recommend having your student complete a resume to highlight and summarize their accomplishments. Some colleges require students to send in a resume, so keep that in mind. Students may also be asked to submit a resume for internships, summer jobs, or scholarships, and it will be very important for them to update their resume every year so that it is kept up to date. So the resume is something that you can include in this section.
Another uh, suggestion for this section are extracurricular activity information. You'll want to file documents relating to these activities that your student participates in, such as sports, honor societies, Girl Scouts or Boy Scouts. Students uh, will have a section on their college application in which they fill in extracurricular activities. So it's very helpful to have all of the details for these right here in this section. If you have a student athlete, make sure to keep those very detailed records. You can even check with the NCAA or NAIA websites for tips on uh, keeping track of this information. We also suggest putting uh, any type of information or certificates relating to awards that your student has received in clear sheet protectors within this section. Uh, if you do have any oversized certificates or things perhaps that are framed, one idea is to file them um, or file the oversized certificates at the very end of the binder so they won't be moved back and forth or handled over and over again. You can also consider taking pictures of of um, things that you don't want that are either framed or um, you can't put within this binder. Um, my daughter had some uh, speech and debate awards and um, th there wasn't a way to insert them into her portfolio, but we took pictures and made sure that we just kept track of all of that information and placed it here. It's also important to place any information relating to those letters of recommendation within the sixth tab. Having letters of recommendations for your student, especially if it's um, when you're in a mid-year move, can help in creating a similar school environment or mirror those extracurricular opportunities once you move. These letters can come from specific experiences, such as a congratulatory letter from a Boy Scout leader for achieving an award, or they can even be used for scholarship applications or those college admissions. Um, they often do require letters of recommendation. Your student can ask uh, counselors, coaches, teachers, supervisors, or anyone who can offer an objective overall endorsement of your student's skills and abilities. Be sure to give the uh, letter writer a copy of your student's resume and let them know why you need the letter so that they can tweak the recommendation based on what it's being used for. Um, You'll also want to make sure you let these letter writers know uh, the deadline when you need that letter. Um, this can sometimes come into play as your student is applying to colleges. Those letters of recommendation need to be submitted at a certain date. And so you'll want to keep track of those deadlines and make sure you inform the person who is writing the letter of recommendation. All right, and now we are gonna watch a video about what makes a strong recommendation letter. So when we're reading a recommendation letter, what we're looking for is what, what kind of presence you are in a classroom. And that's very important to us because ultimately what a university is, is it's a lot of classrooms. It's a lot of people looking to discover new knowledge. Teachers that can give anecdotes about a student in the classroom can be really helpful because we're trying to imagine this student in our classroom. And we're wondering if this is a student that always is speaking up and always raising their hand. You know, the person, the student that the teacher would ask to watch the class if they had to leave the room for a minute, or if this is a student who's fairly quiet and only speaks once in a while, but when that student speaks, it kind of turns the conversation on its head. What I recommend uh, for students to do, and for you to do in this process, would be to sit down with that teacher and maybe even give them four or five bullet points of, you know, why you 
wanted them to write your letter of recommendation. So remind them what you did in their class, right? So loved the, the group work. That was a real favorite of mine. I felt like that really gave me a chance to do some teaching in the class as well as learning. Or that paper that I wrote on Twain, James, and Howell I felt was a good you know, representation of my writing ability. Or you know, I really felt like that group project that we had to do you know, allowed me to both be a participant but also a leader. You know, and really, again, remind them of what you did in the class so they can write a much more personalized letter. The last thing in the world you want to get is sort of a template sort of a letter where you know they're sort of plugging in things about good student we you know always gets the work done works hard the biggest thing we see with recommendation is what we call the template recommendation which is basically a very kind of form recommendation and all they need to do is kind of take out the names the activities you know some of the um, personal attributes and replace them in order to describe one person, but also describing 20 people. So to really help your teachers write a terrific letter of recommendation that doesn't look like a template, uh, you really want to get specific with those examples. You know, really let them know who you are, remind them who you were in their classroom, because basically admissions officers, they like those anecdotes. They like the specificity. That's really going to help them, you know, understand you in the context of that classroom. Another thing that I look for a lot in recommendations is something I call separating. So is your teacher saying, this is a top student in 10 years? Are they separating you from the group? Or are they saying, this is a, this is a good student? Both of those are fine, but you know, one does suggest that um, you are doing something extraordinary in the classroom that's making you stand out from the crowd. Just wanted to mention one more thing about these letters of recommendation. Oftentimes, um, when a teacher or a coach or a counselor is writing a re letter of recommendation for a student for a college application, they will be sending that letter directly to the school. It will not actually go to the student. And so within this section, when we're talking about letters of recommendation, um, those college application letters of recommendation, you actually won't see. You won't be filing in this section. You can keep track of who's writing them and, and the deadline and, and whether or not they have completed it, but often you won't have the actual letter to file. Um, situations where you would have a letter to file within this uh, tab would be when you are moving, when I talked about um, moving from high school to high school and you need a letter of recommendation uh, for that purpose to uh, let the new receiving school um, about it, know about information. So I hope that clears that up. I just wanted to, to clarify. Definitely. Thanks, Emily. Um, okay, so let's look at our final thoughts for today. Um, so again, once you start the college bound portfolio, we, we encourage you to maintain it, update it regularly uh, as your students goals and um, <clears throat> experiences change, so does the document. Um, and so, of course, you can always expand the portfolio and add more tabs if you need to, and it's never too early to begin to put that together. And you may want to consider starting it, even if your student is a freshman or perhaps a middle school, to fully encompass your student's growth, both academically and personally. And remember to please hand carry this uh, when you PCS. I, uh, did, uh, we had the same kind of binder with with really important information in it, like my my children's um, birth certificates, and I didn't think, and I put it on the moving truck, and then for like three weeks, I'm like praying, like please don't let that thing get lost, and because I needed to register my kids for school, I learned my lesson. I never in my life have put it on the moving truck since. It goes in my car. I always have it with me, uh, just in case. So same with this thing. We don't we don't want to throw it on the moving truck. We want to hand carry it to our next uh, duty station. All of the resources we mentioned in this webinar today, as well as additional resources, are included in that downloadable resource that we put in the chat box. And we hope that you and your student will find the College Bound portfolio very successful when you are preparing for college and wish you all the best during this very exciting time. Okay, Emily, you want to round us out with our outro slides? <laughs> 
Absolutely. So we would like to thank you all so much for joining us for this webinar today. We would like to invite you to take part in our survey for this webinar. You can do that by clicking on the survey link that is in your chat box. You can also use the QR code that's there on your slide. Um, once you are in the survey, click on webinar survey and type in the four digit webinar number, which is 3124. Be sure to hit submit at the end of the survey. And if you don't fill it out, Neil, that is okay. Following the webinar, you will receive an email invitation to take the survey. We do use this tool to make ongoing improvements to our webinar webinar series uh, to add new topics of interest and provide feedback to our funders. We would appreciate it if you took the couple of minutes necessary to complete that survey. Also, if you have missed one of our previous webinars or if you'd like to watch this again or share it, the recordings can be found on our website, militarychild.org, under programs, trainings, and initiatives. Uh, there you will, um, in the middle of the screen, you'll see a box that says, see the webinars we have to offer. And that way you'll be able to access all of those recorded webinars. We're also putting the link to that in your chat box. If you have any education related questions, concerns, or issues for your military connected students, please feel free to reach out to our military student consultants or MSCs. They are the premier source to provide you with one on one help for all of your questions. To contact a military student consultant, you can email them at msc at militarychild.org. We also have a wonderful uh, well-being toolkit, which was developed for parents, school professionals, behavioral and mental health professionals, as well as community leaders. This tool is really wonderful. It is full of resources for all aspects of the Military Connected Child's well-being, and we would love for you to explore it on our website and share it with others. And you can see the link in your chat box, and you can also use that QR code. We do have our uh, MSEC 360 summits, which provide opportunities for cross-sector collaboration, idea sharing, and programming support. For more information, you can use that QR code or the link in your chat box. We would also love for you to save the date for our upcoming MSEC Global Training Summit, which will be held in Washington, D.C. from July 29th through 31st. We also have our MSEC Call for the Arts program, which invites military-connected children from all over the world, representing every branch of military service, to share interpretations through art about what it means to be a military-connected child. For more information, uh, you can use that QR code or click the link in your chat. And the submission deadline for, the, for all of the art pieces is April 30th. If you are interested in getting a certificate of completion for this webinar, please complete the online survey. If you'd like to receive a webinar survey for a previously recorded webinar, you can contact research at militarychild.org. We would love for you to join us for some of our upcoming webinars. Uh, next week, next Tuesday, February 13th, we will be presenting Understanding Third Culture Kids. And then Wednesday, February 14th, we'll be presenting Alternatives to a Four-Year College. All of our webinars start at 12 o'clock noon Eastern time, and you can find the registration links to these two upcoming work uh, webinars in your chat box. We would like to give a very special thanks to the Department of the Air Force School Liaison Program for making today's webinar possible. Thank you so much to all of you for your interest in joining us and your participation. Kim and I are going to stay on for a few minutes. If you have any questions, please feel free to type them in the chat box. And we appreciate you and thank you all so much for joining us. <laughs>